Hey guys, um, this week we're going to look at HTML5 animation and what we're going to, the video tutorial and the project is actually going to go through creating what you see over here to the right which is a chart that essentially charts the number of shares that uh, these different um, URLs have on Facebook. Now you'll get to know the details of that in a minute but the overview is we're going to use some jQuery specifically JSON to get some this data in from the graph API endpoint and then we're going to use a graphing uh, a jQuery, it's called jQuery Visualize. It's a jQuery plugin that does canvas animation of uh, the data that we bring in. So we're going to have to do some data templating, that sort of thing. And um, this is going to be the final result. Well, this is actually made possible by HTML5 canvas animation because this stuff is being rendered on the fly. Now, every time I refresh it, if you look, um, the data is slightly different, actually just being arranged slightly different because uh, with every refresh of the browser I'm repolling Graph API to get back results and sometimes they don't all, the response isn't exactly the same each time so pretty much the order changes. Um, anyway, how we're see we're going to take a more practical approach to canvas animation or I don't want to just say canvas there's canvas and SVG because essentially both are just text driven graphics vector graphics that we um, not always vector but uh, text dr uh, driven graphics that are rendering this stuff and kind of want to give you an overview on some practical applications to this now let's start off with just some hardcore canvas stuff or uh, let's just we'll kind of do a bigger blanket statement of um, just HTML5 animation because you could also animate SVG files because you know we've looked into SVG files and we see that they're just XML files so that if we make some edits to the file themselves we could change it well if you consider the tutorials on what it takes to basically draw some basic patterns um, I'm just, I mean, I'm not looking at this website specifically, but this is HTML5 Canvas Tutorials. When you look at the scripting necessary to do this, it it's a lot. I mean, this is some serious coding that we got over here, and the results are uh, not that impressive. Now, uh, well, relatively, mind you. Really, the end graphic isn't all that impressive, but... Uh, its functionality is. I mean, because this is what it's doing with all this code, but look at this. We actually could manipulate this. And then, you know what else we could do? We could change the color of these things with CSS. Now, that is pretty cool, but, but taking kind of a practical look at this, how would you implement this in a professional project? I mean, you know, if this is going to take you a while to create how are you going to charge the client for all this uh, time you spent to, you know, create a nice little uh, star, movable stars over here? Um, so this is clearly an issue with uh, Canvas animation. So uh, the idea then is, well, what tools do I have to do stuff with? So, you know, there's drawing libraries that do this stuff for you. Like, let me look at Raphael JS. Uh, Let's see, Raphael JS library. Now this is probably, Raphael is, um, I'd almost say the equivalent of what jQuery is, but to like uh, drawing specifically. Now Raphael will take some of the most common functions and package them in a nicer way to make it a lot easier to like do something like create a circle or a box or all sorts of stuff like that. Now it's nothing that you couldn't do just by hardcore coding it like this but just like you know if we say that you know jQuery allows us to toggle something there's a lot of logic that goes into toggling you know you gotta expand it, you gotta contrast it, you gotta expand it, you gotta shrink it, uh, you gotta determine what state it's at you know you gotta do a slide animation all that stuff is kind of built into that little jQuery toggle function well same thing it's like all that logic is built into like Raphael's circle function kinda of deal 
anyway, if you go actually to Raphael.js, and down here you're going to see some uh, demos of what you could do with it. I mean, you are going to be amazed. This is way cool stuff. For example, look at this. And if you know, this is all happening with some jQuery, uh, with rather JavaScript and CSS. That's what's doing this, and animation effects. Now, before you could only do this kind of stuff with Flash, and if you try to right-click on it, you'll see that this is not happening from Flash. And if you start digging deeper, you'll really start looking at the interesting stuff. I mean, here's all the code that's being generated to do all this. I know it's mind-boggling, and you clearly wouldn't want to do it, but Raphael is definitely one step closer to uh, what you want to do. And the other thing, too, is that this graphic image is uh, an XML file, and if you actually start looking around, you'll see people prepackage all sorts of stuff. Like I remember when I was looking to do something like this for a map of the America, someone actually already created an XML file listing all the states in there and uh, and their sizes and all this stuff. I mean. It's such an endless amount of work for uh, these kind of results, but fortunately there's the community out there at large is really once one person puts in the effort, they publish it and they get to reuse this logic to really help you uh, rapidly prototype stuff. And, and that's exactly what Raphael is. And it's definitely worth a look because look at that. Again, this is all cool stuff that this is just a timer. And although I'm, I don't know exactly what's going on here, uh, this is accurate, the time. So I'm assuming it's just using like the uh, JavaScript time function to get the time. And then it's using these animation effects to do this. Uh, same thing with these charts and this kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. And really the coolest thing that kind of brings us back to our chart is that this, uh, these graphics aren't static. They can be dynamic in the sense that we can populate them with data from anywhere. Um, and there's so many, like, you know, if, if we're working with, like, jQuery and JSON, there's so much data out there. You know, Google's a good place, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all these different endpoints. Um, you could do some cool stuff and actually chart them out on graphs, on images. Um, just, it, it really... There's so much stuff going on. Um, anyway, this is Raphael, and Raphael is more um, just generic, I guess, generic um, drawing library. Now, I think there's a G Raphael, and this one is for charts specifically. And that's some of the stuff that we're going to be working with. Now, if you see here, once you go to g.raphael.com, this is, they kind of packaged another thing. Uh, another library of sorts that's going to help you create charts for things. Now, none of this is all that relevant to our project, but check out this bar chart. This bar chart would be something that could work nicely in ours. So we could have taken this same data and just put it over something like this. Um, so there's a lot of options. And, you know, Raphael by no means is the only one. There is so much cool stuff out there uh, that it's really... Um, worth your while to investigate. I think one of the most sophisticated ones that I saw, which is uh, infographs, I guess, it, I don't know, they're, they're doing a bit more, is this D3. And D3 actually uses SVG um, animation. So it's so instead of using canvas style code over here, it's using it's editing SVG files. Now, from your perspective of just implementing something like this, it doesn't really matter uh, to you. Although at the current state of uh, SVG uh, SVG versus canvas animation, SVG is a is a bit quicker because it takes less processing power. Anyway, kind of beyond the scope of this conversation. But if you look at this. Um, eh, we don't need to share our location, but there's just uh, D3 has a lot of cool stuff that you know it's worth your while to look over at their examples because it's just mind-boggling. I, I I don't know if you're a, I guess a nerd like me, this is like some cool stuff where you could plot stuff like like look at this. This is this is all data you could pull in. Uh, from let's see what this here's the source code for what they're doing I guess they're probably put in some static 
um, some static data in here but you know you could use something like this to uh, pull in a chart like for example what has our president been spending money on in his term while in office and then you could say obviously if something's bigger uh, you know Obamacare or you know uh, I guess health care reform or something like that or unemployment whatever it is uh, this would seems like spending would be a cool thing to overlay I think it, even the reason I'm thinking that is because I saw that graph specifically but um, they have so many cool points over here wow look at this I mean this is okay so this is not graphing anymore but this is just animation with canvas or SVG HTML5 animation we could just kind of lump it up into that group and um, there's just I mean this is totally worth your while to look into I think this is one of my favorites um, let's yeah oh, that's the wind chart no I was looking for a flower graph I, I don't know there's so much good stuff you really need to investigate um, and finally, the other thing I want to show you is something, one of my favorite charting libraries that I've used, um, highcharts.js. Highcharts is definitely one of the best packaged ones for, uh, what I would say, for professional use. Um, mind you, highcharts would never be as, as robust as something like D3 or GRaphael, but highcharts, what they've done is taken all this complex logic and packaged it into something easy to use and actually I think that one of the dependencies of uh, high charts is Raphael uh, graphing library so you see how uh, because uh, this uh, HTML5 animation is so complex like this they're kind of keep on building libraries on top of libraries to kind of uh, abstract you the designer from having to deal with all this code and uh, that's something that high charts does I'll have I'm gonna shoot another video show you a demo of something I created with high charts but if we look at high charts over here you'll see look at these are all stuff coming in from if you look at it right down any one of these charts edit in JS fiddle um, you'll see what's actually doing this here's the HTML code that's required which is pretty much nothing right and then here is the um, the JavaScript code that they created and this is a little bit easier to work with because if you actually just look at the values that are in here and to the right you see where these values are being are, are coming from so here we have Tokyo and if we kinda go down to where this is we have Tokyo series name so l look at that why don't I call it Los Angeles instead and then run that look same deal but now we changed it over here so you just see how you could work with these charts and they have a lot of cool ones one of uh, one of which that I liked let's see let's get back to high charts was eh, I mean there's there's so many of them that they do over here that um, it's just worth your while to play around with and um, this is one that I thought was particularly cool this is a little kind of like a flower chart or a, a rose chart kind of deal um, so anyway um, plenty of good stuff out there and then I'd say one more level further on this is um, instead of using these prepackaged things we're going to uh, we're, we're not going to do this for class rather but one of the other things that that they're making now is actual software that'll generate all of this code. So I think they're trying to obscure you even more from the code. And for example, a big one coming out is Adobe Edge. Now Adobe Edge is going to look create animated web content using HTML5, CSS3 and JavaScript. So I think Adobe Edge is their plan moving away from Flash to really start generating um, this animated stuff without Flash obviously. Now um, 
they're not the only ones. There's other stuff, and uh, this particular article, it says, you know, three great HTML5 animation tools. And if you just Google HTML5 animation tools, you'll find plenty. But um, there's this hippo animator and hype. Now, I personally don't have uh, that much experience using any of these. I messed around with Edge uh, a couple of weeks or months at this point ago, and it was still very crude, so uh, and they definitely have a lot more to go. But um, that's essentially kind of the, the current landscape of HTML5 animation. Um, you shouldn't, don't think that when you look at code like this, that this is what you're getting yourself into. Because honestly, having to do this is just simply not practical. So anytime you see something overwhelming like this, you know, Obviously, you and everybody else thinks the same thing. So start digging around on, on how you could get some help in the sense of potential libraries or software.